Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about cherry picking. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. All right, what does cherry picking mean? Okay, in the setting of medical coding or health information, right, the health, health information field, cherry picking means someone who is going through a work queue and picking out the easy charts to code and leaving all of the more difficult, complex charts for their coworkers. <laughs> so, uh, I have a viewer who reached out by email and uh, she had a very good email and I thank her for this email uh, to share with everyone. And she wanted to know if I had had any experience with this, uh, co-workers doing this and, and what are some of the things that I would recommend. So I'm going to read her letter and let's get started. All right. She writes, I currently code outpatient for a hospital right now with a newer coder and have been having issues with her skipping complicated encounters or cherry picking as we would call it. I've never had this problem with a coworker before. During the past year, our manager has told her multiple times that we are not to be doing this, but she continues to do so. I feel like at this point she has won and I am so over fighting this issue with her. She continues to make excuses for her actions and make up false claims against me to try and make herself look like the victim. During the quarantine, I didn't really mind and it's probably why it got out of hand, but I thought to myself, since I'm coding these harder ones, I'll learn them and be faster at them once things go back to normal production again. Also during this time, I told her this is the best opportunity to learn these charts and she could come to me for help with anything as I also wanted to be a good teammate to, I wanted, to, wanted a good teammate to help me code this huge clinic. Nonetheless, she continued to skip the hard ones and leave them for me. Months later, I now code this clinic with ease and she has a ton of open unfinished charts lined up in a row that she has not finished. Recently, I caught her in the act working some easy charts and skipping the harder ones again that were just entered into the system. I decided to actually confront her and tell her nicely that I had seen what she was up to and it was not fair on me. She got super offensive and told me that I was trying to watch her and that I was actually the unfair one because I wait for her to code the harder ones and come in and start on the easy ones. I have no idea why she would think I would wait for her to take certain charts. I think she has it in her mind because I work other clinics and come in when those clinics are caught up. I think at this point she needs to hear why doing this is not only fair, unfair to others, but she's only hurting herself. She is supposed to be trained to be in an upcoming clinic soon, and I know the coder that works in that clinic will not be as nice as me towards her about this issue. This new clinic is harder than the clinic we code now, and she has not shown any willingness to learn and she need that and she need what she needs <laughs> to uh, what she needs in order to advance as a coder. Have you ever had to deal with someone like this? I know that it shouldn't be such a big deal now since I know how to code this clinic, but it would be nice to catch a break for once. Anyways, if you make it to the end, thank you for reading what I have to say. I really enjoy your videos and getting an outside coders view on things. Us coders need more coding friends to vent to once in a while to keep ourselves sane. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> All right, so this is a heavy email, right? Because, um, or heavy letter, because it does deal with some very sensitive things. So when it comes to how people are in this industry, you have two types of coders. You have the ones that are excited, that are there, who really love what they're doing. And you have the others that are um, there to collect a check and go home. And that's the reality of it. And we don't know what the background is on this particular coder that is skipping all of these hard charts. And they know that they are inadequate. They have the inadequate knowledge that they need to code these more difficult ones because they're, they're going after the easier ones. And maybe that makes them feel like a stronger coder. And for somebody to be called out, right? And like, well, I know you're skipping and you're doing the easier ones. Of course, they're going to get defensive. But what you should know is um, 
when people do these things, it's very difficult to even address these concerns with your coworker without bringing a manager in, unfortunately, because not everybody is as enlightened as you, right? Uh, if you, if you understand what I mean by enlightened, as far as like, um, you get it and you're going to be able to take constructive criticism and you're going to be able to understand when people are saying, uh, Hey, you're doing this wrong. Okay. Well then show me how, or, um, can you show me your reference and that kind of thing? If you have that kind of discourse between each other, then that's great. Um, but obviously the, the confrontation was not a good idea, right? You knew she wasn't going to take it the right way. And of course, she's going to get defensive when you when you offer her help because it's going to make her feel even more inadequate. Like, well, this this coworker of mine knows that I don't know what I'm doing. Again, we don't know how she was trained uh, because that has a lot to do with it too. If you receive poor training as a uh, brand brand new medical coding student, right, and you don't um, get trained to have those critical thinking skills, it's going to be difficult for you when you get onto the outside. And if you're not doing it on your own, that's also a problem too. So it really does depend on that. And trying to trying to go for those easy ones and, and trying to skip and do all those things, her disrespect to the manager, as far as the manager telling her not to do it, she continues to do it. The manager should have put her foot down and said, okay, now I'm writing you up. Because there's no reason once you've been told not to do something that you continue to do it. Because... Our electronic fingerprints are on every single record that we touch. So every single time you've opened a record, there's a record of that, right? And all it needs to have is, is somebody to go in and audit what you've been touching. And if you have a bunch of records as you haven't, if you, you've been touching them, but you haven't been coding them, okay, now what are you doing? Because you're only supposed to do what you're assigned to do. Not that you're going to be able to go in there willy nilly and looking at all these records. You never do that. If you're having a hard time um, where you don't understand something and you don't want to reach out to a coworker, you don't feel comfortable going to your manager, then you need to reach out to an outside source. Somebody in your uh, association, maybe a mentor in your association, or maybe if you need to get a, a tutoring session book with somebody, there's me and there's a ton of them on LinkedIn. So there's always help out there. The fact that people feel like they can't reach out for help is ridiculous because there's so many people that are willing to help. But if you don't want to take the help of your coworker because you don't want them to say, well, I helped you because that does happen. And, you know, I mean, not, not saying that it's happening to the person who wrote this email, right? That she does that, right? Um, but there are people who say, well, I've helped this person, that person, that person, that person. And they brag about it. And that's not the right way to be. But sometimes people don't know these things. This is why I tell everybody, read books on leadership so that you understand and you get yourself mentally and physically prepared for these types of situations. Physically prepared meaning that your body language is in line with being open for conversation. Because not everybody's going to be open for conversation. And... Her coworker lashed out at her. Take, for example, me, my channel here. There's uh, these, a lot of these videos, they're designed to help people. There are, I have been that lashed out at. I have had people who thumb down my videos, which is fine. You can thumb down my videos. I don't care. Because <laughs> guess what? YouTube sees that as engagement and they just push my videos out even more. So thank you. <laughs> it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me because everybody's free for their own opinion. And if you can't, if you can't give your opinions and you can't give constructive criticism without trying to attack people, then that is a failure on your communications. That's why I always tell you guys, communication, 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 and work towards your communication skills. In this instance, I would have gone to the manager herself and put in a complaint, but you got to put it in writing because it's, you need a paper trail for everything. As the viewer said, the, the a coworker is making up all kinds of lies and, and trying to make herself look like the victim. So that, that is why I recommend giving yourself a paper trail. I spoke to my manager on this date. We discussed uh, the chart skipping. 
or send it to them in an email so that you're always going to have that email traffic that you've addressed this uh, chart skipping issue because really the manager should be on top of it and the manager should step in and say, okay, well, you're skipping charts. This is the second time I've had to tell you that you cannot be skipping charts. Why are you skipping charts? What is the problem here? So the manager should be able to be the one to say, do you need remedial training for something? And they should be willing to get it for them because that is part of being a manager and a leader is knowing the needs of your people. And if you know the needs of your people, then you can get the best out of them. And see, that's the thing. People want to get defensive, right? And say, oh, no, I don't need your help. If somebody's, and, and I re recommend this all the time too, if somebody's reaching out and trying to help you and, and you know that they're being genuine, right? Let them help you. If, if you don't feel comfortable with their help, like I said, reach out to somebody else that is not in your facility to try to help you. Hey, uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to ask anybody in my facility because I don't want them to know that I don't know this, but what do you think about this? Can you help me with this? Reach out to a mentor, reach out to a tutor, reach out to somebody but reach out and try to get yourself elevated because you're always going to run into situations like this with people like this that, that want to be for lack of a better word, not, not putting in the effort and, and trying to code more. And I'm not trying to beat the other person up, but what I am trying to say is that it, it, it just sounds to me like they don't want to ask for help but they need to make the effort to go look for help somewhere else. So that way that they can be a stronger coder too. And the manager, again, it goes back to the leader. The manager should be, should be setting in the environment for the coders to want to better themselves. The, the, let's see, one, two, three, the third, the third manager that I had, uh, her name was Laura amazing amazing woman she was the leader <laughs> she was over 55 coders she did everything by herself yet she knew everybody's situation she knew everybody's story she knew everybody's needs and she pushed everybody she pushed everybody in the sense that she would tell people i know you can do better than this what is the issue here? Well, I hear what you're saying, but how can I help you? And she would help people. People have become better coders because of her. I've learned about uh, speaking in emails uh, because of her. I've learned that when I, when I first got here and there was an issue with the OB coding, right? Issue with OB coding. And in the audits, <laughs> we would go over the audits in a group, right? And so it was me and the other two profi coders, right? And uh, I was picking up these complications on these moms, which they didn't even realize it was a complication. And so uh, my, my supervisor, Laura, was like, why didn't you tell the others? Well, because the others were snapping at me too. They didn't want me in their little group. So that's why I do it like this. <laughs> so... You know, I don't know. And so Laura stepped in and was like, hey, girls, you know, Blue's trying to tell you guys something. You guys need to work together. So that was the start of a little bit more conversation. It was it was strained because there's two girls that did not want me in their little group. And that's going to happen. Was it the most uh, team worthy team building moment? <laughs> no, but it did work out because at the end we were able to have a conversation. And when you, when you have a strong leader, Laura was able to get that going for us because it was me and the, the two other girls, one of the girls just followed the other one. There was, of the two girls, one was the leader. She didn't like that I was in there. She didn't like that I was brought in to help. <laughs> but it was, it was part of, their their need right and and our supervisor laura understood that so she was like hey blue <laughs> that's why you're here because i did ask her let me get out of this clinic because they they obviously don't want to um to talk 
they don't they don't want to communicate with me and they get very defensive just like this one this coder got defensive with her coworker. uh they got defensive with me and i'm just there trying to help <laughs> so whatever your intentions are there's there's going to be that little bit of disagreement there there can be right because not everybody is as enlightened but it, it goes back to leadership and laura being as strong as she was was able to get me and this other lady to communicate and everything worked out. So it's going to go back to the manager. It's going to go back to their handling of this situation because the first time she told that lady to stop skipping those charts, she should have stopped. But if she didn't, then it's, it's on the manager again. That's why I recommend putting all of the, the discourse, all of the communication between you and the manager and, and copy, her, the, copy the manager, copy the manager, copy the manager. But don't try to reach out to this lady. Uh, if, if anything, make sure that if you have to communicate with her, it's on email and the boss is copied on this email because that's the only way you're going to be able to cover yourself because it's all about, okay, this is, this is the best way to communicate so that way nothing gets misinterpreted because you brought the manager into it too. And like you said, she's going to be with somebody else <laughs> that is not as friendly that she's going to learn really quick because not everybody's going to be willing to put up with foolishness either. And foolishness in the fact that there's somebody that's going to be skipping. And if somebody else is not as nice, then they're going to realize that there's a problem here. But this this coworker is going to be in for awakening, right? For an awakening when the, these managers and because that manager has a boss, guaranteed that manager has a boss. And when they start seeing records getting skipped and just kind of sitting there, especially ones that are more complicated, you know, those tend to bring in a lot of revenue, right? <laughs> we got to pay attention to these, right? We got to pay attention to every single encounter. But ones that are complicated, you know, those are the ones that, you know, have a little bit more weight to them. So you, everything has to be looked at. And, you know, the, these things are going to be caught on an audit. So that's something that eventually what, what energy you put out is what you're going to get back. And if you're trying to just skate along, it, it'll, it'll come back, you know. Um, you're not going to be able to, to do very much if you just continue to skate you know, but if you are, if you are in that situation where you're the frustrated party, there's literally nothing you can do, but to be concerned with just what you're doing because her being inadequate, um, and just skipping, somebody's going to eventually see that somebody above your boss may see that and say, okay, <laughs> what's going on over here? Why aren't these records done? And why are these other ones being completed before these other ones? So that is, you know, what I've got to say about that. But yeah, when she she goes for that other that other clinic, they'll they'll start to know. And it is on the coders to to want to educate themselves. It will get easier. It does get fun, but you have to put yourself into it. And a lot of times people don't know that. And there's going to be people that, that are going to be out there like that, <laughs> where they, they look at it like a job and they don't know to, to do all this other research. They don't know that there's, there's channels out there about medical coding. <laughs> um, they don't know. So, you know, you did your best and you tried to help her. She, she didn't want your help. And that's just the way that it is. So, um, unfortunately you're going to run into that. You're going to run into where people are, are going to resent you just for being smarter than them. And that's something that does happen. But as long as you remember what your purpose is, your purpose is to be an advocate for the patients in a hands-off approach way, right? Because we look at their charts. You're an advocate for them. You're an advocate for your providers. And they need to be your priority, the patient and the provider. And all this other stuff with the coworkers can just don't worry about that. Because I had to get to that point myself. I had to get there mentally, be like, 
okay, it's not about my coworkers. It's about them. This is my purpose now here. While I, why I'm here is for my provider. Why I'm here is for this patient. Um, because this population of patients needs to make sure that all of this information is correct in their record. And it's my responsibility to make sure that these records are being coded properly. So you ended up with a good end of the deal, right? You learned, you learned the hard charts. And yeah, we'd all like to have a break from those hard charts. Um, but you know, that is, that is part of the deal. <laughs> I know because I go through it too. Sometimes it's just like, it's like broken bone season. It's like, oh my goodness. And like, even now, right? With this, with this winter storm, now that it's over, I can just imagine what I'm going to be going back into when I go back to work <laughs> uh, with the broken bones. I mean, I can imagine there's going to be a lot of broken bones coming in. So, you know, but we have our seasons, right? And so that is just something that you have to, you have to work with, but I do strongly recommend reading um, leadership books so that you know how to improve yourself so that others around you will want to, um, will want to, uh, how do I say? They'll be more willing to to reach out and not really see you as a threat because you know you're not really trying to be a threat you're just trying to help but there's just different ways of doing things and because everybody's different everybody's going to take um assistance different ways some people don't want your help because that's just the way they are and some people may think that oh well this person thinks that they know everything that's why they don't want your help and that's not the case you know so it is about making sure that your your body language is appropriate and that your speech and your communication is clear at all times. So, um, but no matter what you do, you're, you're going to make some people unhappy in, in your career. And there's going to be people that are difficult <laughs> co-workers in your career. So it's part of the deal. And like I said, but, but having that good attitude of like, now I know these harder clinics because I've taking the time to learn them and work through them so it's not so difficult anymore is a good first step. But that other second step is leadership. And you don't have to be in a leadership position to read leadership books and to listen to TED Talks about leadership. You don't have to be in a leadership position for that. But you can prepare yourself so that way um, it's not about these, these arguments with coworkers it's not even about what they think anymore. It's about you, the provider, the patient, and your and your knowledge base. That's what it's about. So that's just my advice, but best of luck to you on this one. So uh, you're doing the right thing, but uh, don't don't confront because it it doesn't really know it's no good. Take it to the manager. That would be my um, my recommendation because that manager's got to know what's going on and to, to keep letting it slide, letting it slide. That's no good either. All right. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you guys for watching me and I hope you'll tune in tomorrow to the number one question and answer show about medical coding airing on Tuesday, Q and A Tuesday. <laughs> if you haven't had a chance to hit that subscribe button, like this because it really does help me and I will see y'all on the next video. Bye!